Thanks very much. Um, so basically, I uh, just want to give you a quick overview, obviously only got 10 minutes, um, and speak about a current project we're doing with BMA at the moment and their shutdowns for their uh, drag lines. Um, what I want to focus on today is though, all presentations and coming from the uh, engineering world, I try to give something back in my presentations of something of value, something to walk away with, and something practical. Um, so I'll talk about the O&M visualisation data we're doing at the moment, but um, something I really want to focus on and a great topic hearing everyone today is making purposeful and uh, co cognitive steps towards uh, digital transformation um, that we treat really seriously at Red Eye. So, is it the, uh... so, oh, big one with the arrow. Uh, <laughs> so, what I'm noticing now, because uh, with Red Eye, I'm lucky enough to work across a bunch of different asset owners, mining, uh, oil and gas, power, and what we find is that with the digital transformation, what the typical scenario in the market is, is that they get told that, hey, if you don't digital tra digitally transform or use your BIM strategy in the next five to six years, uh, you'll get left behind. So how the topic typically comes back to us is the CEO says we need, uh, you know, three pounds of BIM really quick or else we're going to get left behind. So we get called to say we have a bunch of wax paper drawings and uh, hard copy data, but we want a 3D model. But realising that it's a full process, um, I'm a big fan of patterns in nature. Um, I used to be in the fitness industry for a while and realising when someone used to come and say, um, a very overweight person would say, I want a six pack of abs, the idea and the concept is great and, and we want to encourage that, but be realistic where you're at and understand where, where, where your current data is and try not to eat the elephant in one bite. Take it step by step and make each step purposeful and most of all, ma make sure it addresses a problem. Um, one of my favourite quotes from Albert Einstein is, if I, if I know how to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem in five minutes the solution. Um, we find that if you focus on the problem long enough, you find the solution's quite easy and quite, and quite simple to go ahead. So what we, what we decided to do was something with the uh, foundations of a digital twin. Um, in the first instance, it was the operations and maintenance data, being able to do inspections um, easily from the field. So taking my own medicine, uh, started with the problem first. So the digital twin obviously having, um, which Petra had, had a great presentation today, we find in the, in the assets for instance, so just the uh, drag line in this case, is how can we go from the data in the field, data back to the office? You know, you've got a great system, the ERP, or all, all, all your systems um, back at home, but if the data's not collected properly and doesn't represent what's actually going on, the system's only as good as it's, its data alone. So. Speaking with a number of the teams through BMA, finding that uh, from the operations to the users to the IT to the innovation department, we sort of found that the biggest problem was getting not only paper, even just digitalizing forms wasn't enough. So we had to replicate the data we're collecting to the data that was actually uh, back in the head office. And we found that l large volumes of uh, ir irregular data was where it was found. So the end goal was to obviously give a, re a visual representation of the data in the field. Again, some of the challenges and why I say take it one bite at a time, there's enough challenges on step one without looking at step 10. So step one of getting a 3D model on an iPad or your iPhone and being able to find and pinpoint issues, jobs, maintenance, whatever that, whatever that may be. So the first instance was making a, a rendered image on, on the model and training users on how to use it in the field. Um, part of that was sitting down with the users and saying, what would make sense to you? in every step of the way. And every single meeting, there was at least four guys that said, it's gotta be easy to use, it's gotta be easy to use, it's gotta be easy to use. It doesn't matter how, how technical it is or the problem you want to address, it's gotta be usable. So a lot of our designs are focused around that. So improving the now, so come back to what I just said before, so the, the concept was to build with. So to go through and say, um, how would it look now, instead of saying on boom, number 438, on, on uh, section 344, that may be different to someone else or recorded wrong, but if I can visually represent that on the actual asset itself and have a timeline of what's coming up, a heat map of all the issues done on, say, the boom, for instance, or the drag line, uh, and how that could be fixed over time. So starting with the now, this is a very conceptual just preview of what the system will look like. A lot of it was developed from like a Facebook LinkedIn interface making sure that the guys can use the field and not cluttering it with too much data either. So like I said, looking at step one, don't eat the elephant. For now, we just want a really easy way to pick up data in the field, make it actionable and get a return on our investment in the first step before we start plugging in all these different systems to our digital twin. Uh, part of that was on, on, the, on, the, on the timeline here of seeing what's coming up soon, a heat map of the issues on the boom on this instance and any sort of associated data. So 
challenges that, again, you don't really think of until you start working with it is how can we make this rendered image in the field? How can we go offline? Obviously, mines don't have the best connectivity everywhere. How do we make this uh, things like videos uh, and relating that back to maybe the EDMS or your systems back at the head office? And then how do we translate that into, into actionable insights into the actual asset itself? Uh, and then in real time, we want to be able to have the guys sync the data in the field, call them back and forth and say, hey, I'm noticing more, some, more, some more issues at the moment. Can you go back and have a check, please? Uh, and again, so with, with the, asset, with the uh, tablet view itself, we want to try and drill down more and more. So look at, the, look at the 3D interface. And I think from memory, there were seven levels of asset hierarchy. So one that we can break it right down and really have each, each part um, to help preventive maintenance from there on. Uh, I think for now that a lot of complex asset maintenance is, is developed around sort of running things to the ground. So any sort of more additional insights we can have to make it predictable, the better we can set ourselves up. So again, more of just a quick overview of, of um, drilling down to the binary level of what's there, um, having offline usage and being able to see all right, what should happen next as, as the next step to preventive maintenance. So another thing I want to share, I guess, a takeaway and probably something that hopefully is valuable to everybody here is, is taking everyone in the key stakeholders on the journey with your digital transformation. So throughout every step of this, it was, it was hearing a problem from BMA and then transla translating that into what we thought was a solution, but not just running off, developing it over 12 months, spending a God knows amount of money, and then doing a UAT just to find out that, hey, you know what, it doesn't satisfy X, Y, Z cr criteria. So from the actual vision and the success criteria, we sat down and said, this is what we want, this is what we're thinking, what do you think? And we sort of, and then we modified that around their expectations and their vision of what was acceptable. Um, user scenarios, we looked at user stories time and time again, uh, and even just through the actual user interface and the graphic design. We said, would this work? You know, the way you do, uh, you raise an issue back to the ERP, would, would, would this make sense? Um, and finally going through the 3D model strategy with their IT team, then going down even further, down to the uh, final validation. So again, like any sort of project, you've got to have a start, a finish, and then step by step to see how we can achieve that. Um, the most important thing is how do we know if it's a, if it's a success? Um, because before we look at going above and beyond with these uh, digital twin projects, we've got to make sure step one's done properly or else we're going to be on a bad foundation. So the next steps from here now is, as I said, this was for a uh, drag line for the shutdowns department as a use case. Uh, we find this is a really critical area for these guys, but we're going to develop this out further. Processing plants, uh, wash plants, any sort of large complex asset that, that needs consistent maintenance and multiple dimensions to actually uh, try and get a holistic view of, of, of what's going on. Um, again, we're not kidding ourselves. You know, we understand the mining industry can be quite slow. So again, like I said, in the fitness industry, let's not look at the six pack of abs yet. Let's start with step one and do it really, really well. And then we'll look at step two and maybe integrating additional systems, maybe uh, uh, financial systems and so forth. Um, the biggest takeaway I can say is that anyone you partner with or any sort of developments you have, try and be involved as much as possible. Make sure you're there every step of the way and validating it to make sure that you know, every innovation, every, every solution should start with the problem first and then work back. So. And that's, that's it. Thanks very much.